This week on the 414 Live, we'll be discussing voice technology. Voice technology is going to kick off very, very quickly. But unlike with previous technological changes, uh, most people already own voice-enabled devices. It's just that they're not using them yet. My guest today will be uh, Maria Noel Reese, who recently quit her high-profile corporate career to set about being an educator and advocate for voice technology. Now, as a professional B2B marketer, it's vitally important that you're fully up to speed on voice technology so that you won't get caught out when it does go mainstream. Hello and good morning. My, my name is James Rostance and this is The 414 Live. The 414 Live, live on LinkedIn Live each and every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. So welcome along. Uh, if this is the first time you've seen the show, uh, I really hope you enjoy it because the promise of The 414 Live is for you as a professional B2B marketer, for you to be able to expand and enhance your professional knowledge each and every week. And the way that we do that is by having some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing on the show each and every week. And this again is no exception because as I mentioned in the teaser just now, we'll be talking about voice technology. And voice technology really will kick off very quickly. And I know there's a lot of pundits in the field saying, ah, voice technology will never kick off. It's not gonna be a thing. Well, they're gonna be super wrong. And to help you avoid being one of those marketers uh, that, that'll get caught out, this is why I would thought it would be very cool to have one of the UK's leading experts in voice technology on the show to give you a complete State of the Union address and bring you up to speed so that you won't fall foul of being caught out when it all happens. So, joining me live from Stamford in Lincolnshire, please welcome Maria Noel Rees. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. We got there, we got there. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking about voice technology today, and this is very much now your your new, uh, well, it's not new, is it? But you you quit your corporate um, position to go and do this full time because it's something you believe in so much and you've got a lot to say on the subject. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I just, uh, I think it's such an um, interesting time to do it. It makes me feel like the App Store 10 years ago, where, you know, people started to get phones and started to get used to them and what could they do with, with the technology they had in their hands. And this is the same that I'm seeing um, with vo voice first technology. So it's very exciting. It is. Uh, so could you, um, uh, let's, uh, sorry, I was going to, I've got to press my own buttons this morning because my vision mixer didn't turn up. Uh, so let me pose this first one to you then. Could you explain by, first of all, giving us, uh, could you explain by, by first covering what is voice technology? Uh, and with that, where does Siri fit into the whole equation? Sure. So um, voice first technologies, any type of technology that you don't require any complicated UX or to, to, to um, communicate or use it, you just use your voice. Um, Siri has always been part of our mobiles, uh, but people is not very comfortable using it um, just yet, considering how for how many years we have been using mobiles. Um, now, the introduction of uh, smart assistants and, and home assistants, like the likes of um, Alexa from Amazon or, or Google, that has made people more comfortable um, talking to the technology because you're doing it in the confined space and safe space of your home. So people start to talk to the technology and, and the first time you do it feels a bit awkward and you don't know what the commands are, what do you know, you know how the technology is going to respond to you, uh, if it's even going to understand your accent and I'm speaking from experience here. <laughs> um, so so it's, it's, it, when, you, when you get over that first initial awkwardness and, and, and hurdles, that's when you start feeling like, oh yeah, I can ask a question and she's going to give me the answer. And, and that's where you start um, seeing people more comfortable using Siri as well. 
And so where are we currently then uh, in the state, in the process of development of voice technology uh, within the voice market? So where are we right now with the process of development with the voice market? Sure. So um, I like to look at it in like three stages. So right now, the, the, the way we interact with the technology is very directive. So we are the ones that start the conversation by giving some command words or, or asking the questions to wake the technology up. Um, and then we expect an answer back. Google is a bit further ahead with how people with the with the technology um, which makes it a bit more conversational so that's the, that's the next stage where um, giving an example recently uh, um, at an event where I was in where let's say it's Friday afternoon I get home and I want to order a Domino's pizza um, and because I'm using the voice app uh, the Domino's have um, Alexa or Google knows that there is an offer so when I go Alexa order me a pizza will say also would you like to add um, uh, potato wages to your order because there is an offer and then you start having a conversation the last stage for this technology is when it's going to become assistive and it's a bit scary and it's going to get it's going to get people time to um, get around and work but let's say it's Friday afternoon I walk into my kitchen the, the device can sense I'm there and because for the last three Fridays I've been ordering the same Domino's pizza and because she senses that I'm there, she's going to start the conversation and she's going to say, Hi Maria, um, it's Friday afternoon, would you like to order the usual? And and so she's going to understand better my behaviors, my my likes, my dislikes, at what, time, at what temperature do I like to have the room, at what um, music do I like to play, depending on my mood. Um, and that's where the technology is gonna go, it's, it's truly gonna become a, a, assisting, assistance to, to your life. Exactly like they have in the movies uh, with- uh, Correct. Blade Runner, pretty much every Tom Cruise film. And yeah. anything <laughs> sci-fi, right, okay, cool. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. It's nice, isn't it, how all technology is, is coming together as they as we've been promised in the movies. Uh, I mean, flying cars are they've got to be soon, and of course hoverboards. But for now, voice yep. technology is is just around the corner. Actually, just around the corner, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 people is using it more and more and more. So um, uh, you know, is is I wouldn't even just around the corner. Is there about using the technology? What what is still a bit behind? So I, I was going to ask, uh, where are we, um, where, what is voice capable of right now? And what is it likely to be able to do in the future? Or do you feel like you've already just covered that though uh, with your previous uh, question, answer, Father? Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty yes. much. I mean, to be honest, in terms of exactly what they do, they can do men's, it's about, it's about learning and, and just going with it. I think Amazon has done it really well where they, they have like the same way that you have an app store on your phone, they have a, a skill store so you can see what, what is there available for you. I think the discoverability is one of the biggest challenge um, that brands have on voice at the minute. Um, but the idea is that people will get used to and just start asking questions and maybe there is not a, an app that can answer that question right there and then for you, but the, the assistant will try to find the best possible solution uh, for you. And that, uh, you mentioned uh, just then briefly skills. Uh, now, since uh, we've spoken, I fully understand all of that, but for the benefit of the viewers, could you explain what skills are? Yes, so skills is a person's voice version of the apps. Um, Google's have actions. Um, and the difference um, between a skill and an app on, a, on your mobile is that the skill lives in the cloud. So it doesn't matter which device do you use, whether you're using like the one I have behind me or you're using the one in your kitchen, because you have enabled the skill, the device, what, whichever device you use, will know what is it on, on your account. Um, with the app, that doesn't happen. The apps live on your, you get a new phone, or if there is another phone, you need to download the app and just have it on your phone. And that's kind of the difference between a skill and an app. And who is it that creates these apps? Is this where marketers come in? Correct. So, yes. so 
brand and marketeers, they can all build their, their skills um, or, or voice apps. Um, it could be content-led apps that read what you already have on the website. It could be um, apps that just tell people where, you know, if, if you think it very basic, think, tell people where when your store is open, um, all the way to purchasing. You know, 50% of people, just about 50% of people that have smart assistants are comfortable um, buying uh, through using voice, which is uh, when we had this conversation before, it's, it's really interesting to when, when you look back at online stores and e-commerce when, you know, websites just started to to have the e-commerce functionality, um, people were much more reluctant to to make that that step, to to put their details on their websites, to put their credit card details, to to actually purchase things. And considering how new this technology is, um, that around fifty percent of people is comfortable making purchases is is a huge leap. Indeed, and. With that then, what would you say are some of the main challenges that marketers are going to come up against in implementing uh, voice technology as part of their marketing mix? That's a, that's a really good question because as a marketer myself, when I first started building skills, um, I thought, yeah, this is, this is easy, I can do that. Um, and the, the, the tricky bit for me was the conversational tree, the, 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 the actually taking something that is a channel that you don't know into something that is an interactive channel with using voice. Um, the first skill that I created um, was all about giveaways. And, um, you know, when you do giveaways or prizes or competitions, um, there is a lot of terms and conditions. Here, when you do an ad to put on the radio, you always have that voice at the end that says terms and conditions apply. UK residents only, um, 18 or over. And when I first built my conversational tree, I thought, oh my God, she needs to say all those things. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to be in trouble. And when you write it all down the same way that you write a piece of content to go on the website it, and, and then you listen it back, is horrendous. Is is it was like no no we, this cannot work and and then you start taking it into parts and and suddenly it makes more sense into a conversation. So if someone wants to know when the competition finishes, you don't have to put it right there from the bat for for the technology to tell you. Then someone might want to ask that. Um, so you have to have it, but you don't have to have it right there in front of people. So I think that's one of going to be one of the trickiest things. Just relearn everything and just start thinking about voice first. Um, it's going to be it's going to be hard. So it's sounding like there's a lot of thinking and planning involved on the marketer's side to get voice to work. Uh, is is that a, a fair? Um, consideration yeah I think I think the planning is key when when so I've been working in digital marketing uh, digital marketing for, for a while now and the the beauty of, of doing digital marketing is that you can have several variations of your copy and you can just do it really quickly and then see which one works and then you know it is the, the speed to market is is much faster now when you are trying to think about voice and creating apps for your um, the planning is, is really important. And I'm talking post-it notes, um, someone with even, you know, the conversation, playing the conversation back at you. I, I was at an event um, not long ago uh, and someone was talking about the BBC Good Food voice app. So now when you ask for a recipe to one of your smart assistants, as a default, they go to the BBC uh, Good Food skill. They were saying that they spend so much time just making it better because how do you how can you assist assist some to um, you know follow a recipe when you know the smart assistant the, the, the speed that, that someone chopping an onion is different from me and, and, and from you so it was it was incredible the amount of planning that went into that but it's definitely worth it at the end so it's it's a, it's a step that you know you should you shouldn't be overlooked absolutely now. I should uh, say at this point, if anyone uh, watching right now would like to put a question to Maria, uh, then please do get on in the comments box and type it in there. Uh, Martin Liguri has uh, already jumped in. Thank you for that, Martin. Uh, we'll come to that in a second. But yes, if you've got a question you'd like to put to Maria about voice, uh, we've got one of the UK's number one experts on the show right now. So please make use of this opportunity. Uh, so Maria, you mentioned then briefly about 
uh, about the BBC Good Food skill being number one. I think you've touched on something there, which is, uh, and I know this from when we spoke, that unlike with the, uh, how, how would you say, unlike with the race for getting listings on Google of say one to 10 on the first page, I'm right in saying it's not going to be the same thing with voice. It's either you're there or you're not. There's only one number one choice. Have I got that right or could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so um, from an SEO point of view, the oh, race yeah. is not going to be about being on page one where you have like 10 different uh, options. If you ask an open question that doesn't require, you know, the, the technology to go to a, a skill or, or an app, one of these apps, um, it will, they will try to question by going through the search engines. And if they do that, the likelihood is that they will um, feed back the first answer that they get on the page. Because, of course, these search engines have got, gotten so well with making sure that whatever ranks first is the right thing. Um, that the technology is gonna is gonna go uh, is gonna give you that, and and that's one of the um, another of the challenges that um, some marketeers are gonna face. Where if people is searching for it using voice, um, being on the right on the top is gonna make a difference. Good. I really wanted to make sure that we got that point across. Actually, so it's uh, <laughs> I want to quote Grant Cardone here: If you're not first, you're last. Uh, but in voice technology, that really is going to be the case, isn't it? That you're either yeah. there, so you're not not even there at all. Wow. Yeah, and and what what is gonna what is gonna make us all rethink as marketeers is how what what are we there for? You know, you you cannot be and and that and that's what we are all facing when we're trying to be the top of the page on on SEO. We're trying to be everything for for all things. Um, and when you're building for voice, it's all about the value exchange. So, so what are you there for? What, what, what are you? How are you helping people? You know, to answer the question. So, it might not be that you want to be top one on automotive. Maybe it's all about, um, you know, helping you get that particular car or get getting you in the in the market for, for first time buyers or you know just being that much more specific about what you want to do and how what what audience do you want to attract excellent uh, so Marit, could i put to you uh, martin's question first of all uh, sure so martin asks what knowledge or skills do i need to start building for voice first assistance okay um so it's funny um any developer will be able to build a skill. It doesn't require any going back to university and study something different. Um, so so what the knowledge that you have is, 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 is perfect. Um, also the uh, big players, so Amazon and, and Google have made it really easy for people to, with no development skills like myself, go and, and, and have a go and play. And it's gonna be easier and easier for people like, project managers or, or product owners or, or marketeers to actually at least build a prototype mm. to see how it works and um, um, there is a new tool that is a conversational flow that um, I've been using from Amazon that I can create it just by dragging and dropping and and then it just gives me the code at the back and then I just give it to one of the developers and then they just create something so it's not I mean I want to say it's rocket science but is, 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 is not. <laughs> it is a bit of rocket science, but it's not at the same time. Uh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> you, need, you, need, you, you definitely need a developer or someone that can help you with the code, but it's right. not like you're going to have to go as a developer. You, know, you don't have to go back to university or you know, to, to, to study extra on how to develop these skills. I get the impression that uh, for marketers who jump on this now and then have their company come up or brand or product, whatever it is, on Alexa skill. That's going to be seriously impressive to their CEO when they go, oh, hey, check this out, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and to be honest, that's probably one of the biggest challenges. I don't think the CEOs are thinking about boys. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're just thinking about, you know, and that's what has happened to me in the past, where, you know, when I started tapping into boys, 
it wasn't anybody's radar. It was just, oh, let's let's do something different. And as marketeers, we are all very curious about what she's about innovation and about how can we, you know, break away from from the pack. Um, and that's how I ended up uh, with voice first technology. And uh, like you said, yes, I, I think he's gonna be, at some point when he gets to the top and he's like, oh my god, we need to be in voice. Someone is gonna say, we already are. We, we you know, we're doing great. Oh, great, good. Nice to be that head of marketing who took action yeah. <laughs> with all of that. Nice. So, in developing a, uh, a voice strategy, what considerations uh, do you recommend that uh, marketers have in planning a strategy? Sure. So, I normally let go based on on three tips, uh, based on the experience I have had while building all the skills that we've built so far. Um, one of them is about, and I said this before, the value exchange. If people can do whatever you want them to do easier using their, your app or your website, then there is no point. You might not even, you, you just think about it, you might not even need to be, to have a skill. Maybe you just need to get much better in your mobile proposition. So it's about that value, just being there for the sake of it, considering that discoverability is such a big challenge. Is, is not really worth it. So if I, I always think when, I, when I'm thinking about skills or new projects or new ideas, if there is a way of doing this easier than voice, then, you know, it, it, I, I, I will just drop it or maybe try to find a way around it. So that's one. Um, the other one is about experimenting. So, and I'm a big fan of that. I think marketeers should start even if it's small when they start to think about the voice strategies just thinking about instead of going to perfection let's just build something now see how people take it learn from it iterate make it better and just wait until you have something perfect to go on to voice i think it's really right now is really really important because in a year's time when anybody else wants to go on to voice the bar is going to be really really high and you know, people that have already nailed that customer experience, that that interactive exchange, um, are going to be miles ahead. You know, like the BBC Good Food, they they just nail their recipe skills. So anybody else that comes with a recipe skill, the bar is already really really high. So you need to start there, and that's that's a challenge. I like that you, you've really emphasised the idea of having a strategy behind all of this. Uh, because that immediately makes me uh, remember what was it, the Seth Godin book, where he warns against having, creating a, I think, wasn't the book actually called Meatball Sunday? Um, I think so. I think, was it, okay. And yeah, and he advises against just dolloping on the latest uh, thing, just for the sake of having the latest thing. Uh, but from what you're saying there is that, so long as you've got a strategy behind it, then you can get this to work. But don't, approach this until you've got a strategy, is that fair? Oh. Uh, yes, and, and, and the, the, the value exchange, should you be in voice ah. at all? Right, should so you, you should, the other thing that you need to consider is, is the, is the um, tone of voice, because you're going to have to put your brand, you're going to have to give it a voice, and it's going to have to be a male, a female, could be just Alexa, but then uh, uh, skills can only go so far. D does the voice need to have an accent? Um, you know, what kind of sound do they have? Is it high pitch? Is it low pitch? So all those things are part of your or your strategy when you're thinking about going into voice. Mm -hmm. And for marketers to be uh, to be ahead of the curve, what do you recommend as a course of action to take right now? Just look, look at look at your market sector, and then to go to the to the Amazon um, skill kind of store, and just look at what people is doing in that on that sector. If you think you can do it better, if you think that um, you you know can have more audiences, or because at the moment is developers just building things that they think is, is cool and um, it will go viral and if you already have a brand and a, and a footprint with, a, with an audience, audience that is an advocate of your brand then that's going to be easier for your discoverability um, and so that's that's the first thing I will I will recommend everybody to do if you think okay we're going to go to voice then just have a look at 
where the VAR is. Excellent. And uh, another thing I, I wanted to ask is, so you left your corporate job uh, to focus on this now. Where, uh, how can people get in contact with you uh, to learn about this more? And where will you be appearing next? That's a very good question. So, um, so yeah, so I started an agency called uh, Voice Lab. Mm -hmm. Voice as in voice in Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. And anybody can email me at maria at voicelab.co.uk. Um, the other advice I have is ask for help. There is people like, you know, I've, I've done it for a year and a half now. So if you have an idea and you don't know where to start, just shout. There is so many people. I'm, I'm part of Women in Voice, um, uh, a few other uh, voice groups. So, you know, there is, there is, a, there is a community of, of voice experts that will be willing to help. So don't don't think you, you are on your own if, if you want to tap into this. And the next time I'm going to speak right now, this is my last engagement of the year. I've been speaking for the last four weeks in four different events. So I think I'm ready for the break. Um, and okay. next next time I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in Manchester, um, uh, May 2020, I think. Manchester City Digital is a really good event. So I'm going to be speaking then. Nice. Well, Marit, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Uh, I, uh, and uh, yes, this has been good. And uh, thank you for joining us. No, thank you so much for, for inviting me and for having me. And yes, please, everybody, you know, can add me on LinkedIn as well. So shout if anybody needs any help. Indeed. Yes, that's Maria Noel Reese on LinkedIn. Connect with her if voice is uh, interested to you in all of this. Well, if, indeed. You. If you've enjoyed watching, uh, please do subscribe to the 414 podcast on your favorite podcasting app, or indeed search for the 414 on YouTube for all previous episodes. Uh, in the meantime, the 414 Live will return next Thursday at 11.30 a.m. My name's James Rostance. Thank you for watching. Ah. <laughs>